Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh oh. I'm almost ready. There we go. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. God is good and he's so worthy to be praised. Uh, yeah, uh, this is Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. And uh, we thank and praise God for all his goodness throughout this week. We had an amazing grace conference. I hope you were able to make it. The weather didn't stop you, but it was an amazing conference and um, just awesome. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, we want to send blessings your way. I'm going to start something today that I think will really be a blessing to your life. And um, I just believe that the best is yet to come and that all is well. Amen. All is well. Send blessings out to those of you today because, you know, if Melchizedek could bless Abraham by saying, then uh, I'm going to do the same thing, right? We bless you by saying that you are blessed. Why do I say it? Because I believe it. I believe you are blessed uh, because of Jesus. I believe you're blessed because of what Jesus has done and is doing for, for your life. Amen. Uh, I pray for somebody said they lost a son. I hate that. I just I pray for you that God will give you uh, the strength. There's one thing I know he is with you. He is with you. He will comfort you in all of your troubles. That's what the word says. And so we agree with the word for your life. And and uh, we send out our condolences and our love to you. And uh, yeah, we, 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 we believe God with you in Jesus name. And so. Yeah, where are you guys coming from? Let's see. Uh, what would you think about the Grace Life Conference? Those of you who showed up, it was, uh, whew, I think it was the best one we've had yet. And that was a mind-blowing experience. We had uh, several countries around the world that showed up at Grace Life. Um, man, it has been, it was something. It was something. I just had to make sure I came on live today to let you know. First of all, thank you for your prayers and your support for uh, Grace Life 2024. Uh, the reunion was amazing. It was amazing. The word was just full of revelation, full of understanding. Somebody says it was epic. It, it, that's a good way to describe it. It was epic. And... Um, yeah, man, if, if you missed it this year, man, get on it for next year. Because, I mean, if you start now, then you'll have everything you need to, to make sure you're there. But it was awesome, epic, big time. It was, it was amazing. I, I don't even have the words to describe what we experienced at Grace Life Conference 2024. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep having them if you keep coming. And but we're we're determined to get the grace life out there to show people how to live the grace life and uh, to continue to preach the gospel and to dive into um, uh, some difficult questions there. That's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the years. I'm going to be confronting those difficult, those difficult contradictions in the Bible and so that we can look at them and see what they are. And, uh, yeah. Um, somebody says, I keep coming back. Yeah. Keep coming back. I do too. I keep coming back. And, uh, it's, it's, I'm so excited. I'm still excited. I'm still excited. And those of you who had a chance to go to the Saturday, um, morning women's conference was that not epic. Oh my goodness. And then, uh, those of uh, the men that came to the men's conference. Wow. I mean, uh, Inky Johnson's te testimony just always gets me, but <clears throat> this time I just saw even more 
um, from what he was sharing. And I, and I talked about the impact of fatherhood in the lives of every man and the four basic needs of every man. And it, it was amazing. Uh, the minister's conference was like, wow, it was it was all about uh, becoming vulnerable uh, and uh, how vulnerability was the path to impact. The more you're willing to be seen in your vulnerability, the more impact you would have in the lives of people. Uh, wow, man, it, it, it was just so amazing. And then we talked about, you know, deliverance from approval addiction and how you have to be vulnerable with God, with the with yourself first, vulnerability with yourself, and then become vulnerable with you and God, and then become vulnerable um, uh, with other people, but don't be careless in how you choose people to begin to um become vulnerable with. And I don't know if I've ever been to a minister's conference where uh, the root issue was if leaders are willing to be seen in their vulnerability, that that will actually cause impact and cause his leadership to go to another level. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, it, it was, it was, it was wow, wow, wow. And, um, uh, yeah. And then, you know, the music was amazing. I was so glad to see Pastor uh, Bishop Hezekiah Kyle Walker. And um, it was just great. Doe came in. Brian Courtney Wilson was smooth as silk. Our praise and worship team was amazing. It, it was, you know, um, it was almost 100 degrees out there that day. And we had marching bands in the front. Uh, marching it was it was just all of that and I, i'm just so so glad uh it, it was it was it was something it was really something i didn't notice that somebody said all of the speakers came from the book of john i mean john's a special dude but but i didn't know that but i'm gonna go back and we're gonna try to have a uh grace life uh rerun on the um on the um platforms uh, we're going to talk about that and see how we can get that to, to go. Just start it on Thursday and just rerun it and uh, let some of you get in on it. It was that awesome. It, it was life changing. So I know I can go on and on. It's kind of like that little video my daughter did when she snatched the tape out and say, put it over your mouth. You're talking too much about Grace Life. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah. I uh, somebody somebody just mentioned something that I, I'm really going to be talking about. How does faith sit in 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 fit in the grace life? Uh, well, the Bible says in Romans five and two that we access this grace by faith. And I mean, what does that mean? You know, and one of the things I also realized is he said that we were saved by grace through faith, and it was a gift of God. A lot of people don't realize that your faith was a gift of God as, as much as your grace was a gift of God. And uh, so we're going to have to deal with, uh, you know, how faith and works go together. I mean, because it's in the scripture, faith without works is dead. I mean, how does that, how does that fit? What kind of works is it referring to? And, um, you know, how does that go along with you know, performance base uh, mentality of the old covenant and, you know, faith in Jesus uh, base. And so I'm going to be dealing with some of those tough subjects. I, I believe that, um, you know, uh, a lot of things about faith we have to talk about because, you know, faith apprehends or appropriates what grace has already made available. And um, so we're going to look at a lot of stuff that I think will help you to totally put those things together. Um, and uh, so um, keep joining us and and um, I'll let you know when we're going to deal with that. Amen. Uh, somebody said, can we pray for cooler weather? Ooh, boy, you ain't kidding. I tell you what, my dog comes in early in the morning now because he knew it's going to be hot. And he want to get in that garage so he can hide away from those hot temperatures. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, but
But anyway, let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, and then I'm going to talk about, I started today talking about what does it mean to be trained by grace? Trained by grace. Uh, all right. Now, uh, repeat after me. I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. Glory to God. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. Because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life. And he will show me his salvation. I declare that I am Psalms 91 equipped. And all is well with me and my house. In Jesus' name, amen. Now receive all of that right now. Receive it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, go with me to the book of um, Titus. I want to show you something that I think will really change your life. Titus chapter 2. And uh, we looked at this uh, doing Grace Life. A little bit and um yeah man this is this is going to be a blessing to your life i want to deal with this uh hopefully today and tomorrow so you can see what's happening here titus chapter uh two and uh let's start at verse 11 i'm going to read 11 12 13 titus chapter 2 and verse 11 so this 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 chapter two talks about Christian doctrine, and it mainly focuses on conduct. Christian doctrine with a with a major focus on conduct. Okay, now watch this, verse eleven: For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So the grace of God presents to us a gift of salvation all right so because grace can't be uh understand something uh when you're talking about something by grace you're talking about something gifted to you a gift can't be earned watch this and a gift can't be worked for hmm see that a gift can't be earned a gift can't be worked for you can't work for salvation because it was gifted to you. All right. So somebody might say, well, you know, uh, we, we, we were saved. Notice we were saved by grace. All right. And you believed it. All right. And went ahead and received it by faith. You, you, you accepted it. Faith appropriates. Faith lays hold on what grace has made available, but grace made it available. Uh, faith didn't make it available. Grace made it available 
faith laid hold of the gift. So I, I, by faith, I laid hold of the gift. I didn't earn the gift. I didn't work for the gift. I didn't deserve the gift. God, through his gracious love, presented me the gift of salvation. And I went ahead and and I laid hold of it with my faith. You, you remember, he says, Romans 5, 2, you access it. You, you can access a gift. By, by faith. Now stick that in your notes for, for future reference. Verse 11, for the, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation, this grace, this gift hath appeared to all men. So now here's the next thing. This grace uh, gift has been made available for every man on the planet, whoever wants it, if they access it, it's it's available. The gift is available. All right. But now this is the part that that got me. For those who receive this gift of salvation, um, that we get through grace, he says grace not only has made a gift available to everybody, but he said grace teaches us, us who receive it grace teaches us and what is grace going to be teaching us watch this grace going to teach you how to deny ungodliness grace is going to teach you how to deny worldly lust grace is going to teach you how we should how you should live soberly grace is going to teach you uh how you should live righteously and godly in this present world wait a minute i always heard that be careful about uh, that grace stuff, because if you if you talk about it too much, you'll 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 learn how to you'll find yourself uh, living a loose life. And people were afraid of it to talk about it because, oh, my God, because, you know, somebody somebody somewhere probably said, you know, under grace, you can just go for it, you know, and just do anything. You know? And so you thought that anything included, you know, loose living and all that other kind of stuff. But notice that's not what grace teaches. It, first of all, it's amazing that grace it becomes a teacher. Grace is now teaching us conduct. All right. But then look what else he says here. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So in the middle of all this, he's talking about how grace is teaching us. And what we should be doing while we're being taught is looking for the return of the Lord and looking for the great return of, of God. Now, I want you to mark this in your notes, Titus 2, 11 and 13. It is pregnant with stuff that we need to get a hold of, right? All right, so check this out. Probably no other passage in all of the, the word of God so completely summarizes the subject of Christian conduct. Isn't that something? Christian conduct. Now, I want to give you three aspects of conduct that are mentioned here in, in Titus 2 and 11 through 12. I want, I want to give you three aspects of conduct that are mentioned. All right, ready? Number one, true Christian living, based on what we just read, rejects and denies ungodliness and worldly lust. What is he saying? How, what does he mean? What does that look like? He's rejecting all things that are done apart from God. All right. So ungodliness is a disregard for God. Ungodliness is all of those things you do apart from God. So when I say ungodliness, I'm not just talking about the fruit of ungodliness. I mean, the apparent sin. I am talking about the very nature of ungodliness, which means anything that's done apart from God, a total disregard for God. And so now Christians can operate in ungodliness by totally disregarding God. See, when I say ungodliness, you're thinking about that wicked person, that murderer and all that kind of stuff. And that is ungodly. But two Christian people who, who do things disregarding God, 
or they do things apart from God, they too are ungodly, all right? Uh, and the desire for the pleasures of this world, so all things that are done apart from God and the desire and, and having a desire for the pleasures of this world as such are, are therefore excluded. So that's, that's what we find in Titus when it talks about grace. It's talking about Christian conduct. And most, most folk, well, I don't fool around with that grace because, you know, that grace will have you to go around acting crazy. And he's talking about Christian, con he's talking about teaching us and training us by grace how to conduct ourselves. All right, so that's the first thing. Here's the second aspect of, of, of conduct that we find in, in these three scriptures. Life should be lived godly. Life should be lived soberly. Life should be lived righteously in this present world. That's what grace teaches. Grace says life should be lived godly, you know, where you're not doing things apart from God. Grace is going to teach you how to live life where you're in complete dependence on God and not doing things apart from God. He says uh, he's grace is going to teach you how to live soberly. OK, and righteously in this present world. Grace, this is what grace teaches. And I have heard just the contrary. Well, I tell you what, you better watch out for those people that are talking about, you know, under grace, they can just live ungodly and, and say that's great. That ain't grace. Grace is not teaching you how to live ungodly. Grace is not teaching you how to do things apart from God. Grace is not teaching you that that's not grace. That's not grace. Grace, is, if, if there's anything in the world that's teaching you godly conduct, conduct, it's the grace of God. But People don't think that they, but that old grace, you better watch out for that grace stuff, man. You'll be going around sinning and think, thinking that, you no, know, no, grace teaches you how to live righteously and it teaches you how to live godly. All right. All right. Here's the third aspect. Now this, this is really important. The whole life that our whole life should be lived in view. It, it should be lived in view of and with an expectation of the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. So grace is going to show us how to live our life in view and in expect in view and in expectation of the return of the Lord in view of the glorious return of the Lord. There is something about living life in view of the return of Jesus. Something about living life in expectation of the glorious appearing of Jesus. Notice in the middle of, you know, grace has been made available to the whole world. Grace is going to teach you how to um, handle ungodliness and worldly lust. Grace is going to teach you how to live righteously and soberly. Uh, and, 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 and grace is going to teach you how to, how to do all these things in view of, of the return of the Lord. Now I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that is something because any practical Christianity that does not compare these three conditions is not true Christianity. It's not true Christianity. So be careful. Uh, you start hearing grace that just starts telling you to, to disregard God and, you know, you ain't got to worry about how you live. After all, you're under the grace of God. Now, grace will teach you how, how to live. Don't you assume that you know how to live and you just live in any kind of way. Grace, grace will teach you how to live. OK, and we need to get under that teaching of how to live by the grace of God. And I guarantee you, it's not just going out and doing. Some people assume that they just think, well, if I'm under grace, I can live like uh, crazy. And that's that's not the truth, guys. That's not the truth based on what we just read. So the lack of emphasis upon that which constitutes true Christian conduct is matched with the lack of emphasis upon that which teaches a believer how to live the Christian life. So living the Christian life and understanding true Christian conduct by grace has got to be emphasize the truth that the grace of God, the very same grace which brings salvation and the truth that it also teaches those who are saved 
how to live pleasing unto God, that seems to be entirely overlooked by many people. That the grace of God will teach you how to live pleasing unto God. But we 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 don't we don't want we don't get that because we think that grace out is a license to sin. No, it's not what it is. It's not it's not a license to sin. In fact, grace will teach you to such a point you start recognizing, dude, I don't even have a desire to do some of that stuff anymore. OK, so the person who says I believe in grace, but I do not think it should be emphasized too much because it leads people to a sinful, careless living. They have failed to understand God's work of grace on behalf of all he by grace has saved us from. He saved us from. So growth in spiritual life comes only by the grace of God. I'm telling you right now, growth in spiritual life comes only by the grace of God. Uh, other than that, you know, you remember Second Peter chapter three and eighteen. He says, he says, uh, Peter admonished them and he told them to grow in grace. Grow in grace. Wow. So there's a great need for a fuller presentation of the grace of God. We just we just kind of been shaving over it for years. Um, but we we need to really dig into this. OK. Um, and so not only the truth that salvation from condemnation is entirely of grace. Right. But even more of the truth that the very same grace which brings salvation also teaches the saved how to live godly in this present world. Grace teaches us how to live godly in this present world. So there's a false idea, ladies and gentlemen, a prevalent one at that, that God's law teaches men how to live godly. And that's not true. God's law doesn't teach people how to live godly. Not one man has ever learned godliness by the precepts of the law of Moses. Not one. They learn about what is said but they they have a hard time carrying it out um so yeah we're gonna have to pick up with this tomorrow but this is where we're gonna go we need to talk about this a little bit more um so we can really look at some things i'm gonna look at the the galatian church and and uh i just really want to take the rest of this year to really uh dig down on some things and 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 hopefully can bring some understanding so you can really look at it and see how it is but the grace of god you know you should be able to one day look at your life under grace and then look back and say whoa look at what grace is doing in my life and you know the bible says that and remember grace is a person his name is jesus and you know what happens is the bible says that that um uh that uh this grace will teach you how to live godly and watch this uh, the fact that he will work on your desires so that you can do what pleases god and and i think that's what's happening right now remember we are god's workmanship so god has a work the work of god okay and the work of god is working on your desires or your old want to's to um trans uh, form you because of some new want to. So God's going to take away your old want to's through his grace and give you some new want to's and the stuff you used to want to do, you ain't going to want to do it no more because he's working in you. You are his workmanship. That's the, that's the thing. We're so busy to trying to look for work we can do. We're ignoring God's work, <laughs> God's work. Praise the Lord. Uh, and we are his workmanship and God's working on us to bring us to a place of complete uh, dependence upon him, complete dependence on him. So, you know, you got to break this thing down. And I think what happens a lot in the church, an answer is given one week and then the conclusion of the answer is given the next week. But people kind of, well, I came to church this Sunday, but I ain't coming the next Sunday, nor am I going to be responsible for trying to get the tapes and figure out what was said and then you miss it and then you go off half cocked 
and spend another 10 years without understanding the full uh, understanding how God through his grace wants to teach you. And, um, you know, I talked to the Grace Life Conference about how to come to a meeting. I mean, if you're coming to a meeting that lasts for two and a half days, don't miss a session. Because the one you miss is the one that the answer is going to that the answer you need is probably going to be given. And uh, yeah, man. So this is this is this is pretty. Um, I don't know if I've ever dealt with this online with you guys, but I think it's worth dealing with. Um, uh, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine, right? The small foxes. And we, we it's time to deal with some of those. Uh, and I don't really think they're small that because, you know, if you ignore just that little piece, you know, then that little piece can probably redirect your life. The longer you go with it, the farther and farther away you get from the truth. And um, so that's why we want to deal with that. I mean, you, you can't deny what I'm talking about. You just read it. Grace teaches us. And that's amazing. That's awesome how grace teaches us. And remember, you know, the spirit of grace has been poured on the inside of us. He's teaching us how to walk in that love. Uh, remember Jesus, Jesus, who is full of grace and truth. You follow what I'm saying? I'm not saying the subject matter of grace teaches you, although you learn a lot from that. But I'm talking about, you know, Jesus full of grace, the spirit of grace. Everything uh, is going to begin to come together to work uh the work in you and you are his workmanship and um that that's awesome i mean i just it just it 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 really uh, uh, gives me joy to know that god's working on us god is working on us and god is not going to start the work how did he start it he he gave us the, the gift of salvation so he's not, he's not going to start the work okay and um, then just turn it over to us to finish it. He's not going to do that. OK, so he started the work. He's going to continue the work. And the promise is he's going to finish the work the day Jesus comes back and we are going to be like Jesus. And so I am in cl complete dependence on God to do that. I am dismissing myself uh to try to add to jesus you know i believe that jesus uh plus nothing you know I, i'm not gonna add to jesus like he needs me to do his work you know i sow i i uh plant uh i plant i, I water but god's the only one that can give the increase and um and so i just trust that grace is teaching us today grace is teaching you today grace is teaching me today and we're being trained by grace until we come to that place of complete dependence upon him. And you are going to see the difference in, in your life. But it's not because of anything that you've done. It's going to be because you finally understand that I am going to put my faith in Jesus. I bring nothing to the table. He brings everything to the table and he knows he knows how to train me. He knows how to teach me. He knows how to raise me. And uh, I think sometimes people get so freaked out over, yeah, but what do you do? Well, you you remember the, there were some guys in the book of John chapter six and they just saw the multiplication of the bread. Right. And, um, you know, they followed Jesus and and they came to Jesus and they asked him, what do we do to do the works of God? And Jesus answered them, believe in the one that I sent you. OK. Uh, believe in the one that I sent you. Somebody said, well, faith without works is dead. Well, faith without believing in the one that he sent you. He told you that. He told you in John. He said, here is how you work the works of God. This is what this is. All I want you to do is believe in the one that sent you. But you know what most people say? Yeah, but what do you do? Yeah, but what do you do? Believe in the one that I sent you. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But what do I do? But what do I do? Have complete dependence in the one that sent you. Yeah, but what do I do? Completely depend on the one that sent you. <laughs> That's what Abraham did. Abraham believed God. What does that mean? He had complete dependence upon God to do what was needed to be done. I mean, what could he have done? He completely depended on God to, to make happen whatever needed to happen in order for Isaac to be born. 
Wow. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that and and make sure that we have a, a complete understanding of the grace that had, uh, that that is Jesus Christ and 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 that things come by grace. There's certain things that are gifted to us. Man, I'm almost looking at everything that look at all the gifts that have been given to us. All right. Righteousness is a gift. Redemption is a gift. You didn't do anything to earn that. You know, you were made righteous by Jesus Christ. Right. And so, yeah, we're going to put this together and I think it's going to bless your life. I have enjoyed myself today. You can tell it. I'm all over the place. Just thanking God for the opportunity of sharing with you and thanking God for the opportunity of you joining us today and joining the grace gang today and uh, looking forward to tomorrow love you guys so much it's going to be a glorious monday have an amazing day today all is well with the grace gang today you guys are amazing thank you so much uh pray for us i'm gonna go somewhere and be quiet today and and relax relax and and, and let my voice kind of rest up a little bit because i am ready to do some teaching and, and sharing the word of God like never before. I am on fire where teaching this word is concerned. This word of grace, praise God. And it is awesome. So study out Romans 5 and 2. Also Romans, I think, 4 and 16. And it tells you that all of the gifts that God present to us can't be accessed except by faith. So we need to realize and understand what does that mean? What does it look like? And so we're going to be working on that. God bless you. Have an amazing day today. Don't be moved by anybody's drama. Okay. Don't be moved. You ain't got time for no drama now. Don't be moved by no drama. All is well. And we thank God for you. In Jesus' name. Bye bye, everybody. You know, I like this.